Welcome to the 24th annual Miami Jewish Film Festival, one of the world's largest and oldest Jewish cultural arts events. We want to thank all of our members, sponsors, community partners, volunteers, all of you film lovers, and especially our presenting sponsors, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education, SAGE, and the Greater Miami Jewish Federation for their continued support throughout all these years. My name is Angie Cohen, and I am the 2021 Belsberg Postdoctoral Fellow in Israel Studies at University of Calgary. I am a researcher on personal memories and narratives of Jews from Northern Morocco, and I am excited to be moderating a virtual conversation with Kamal Ashkar, director of the movie In Your Eyes, I See My Country, which is premiering at this year's festival. Thank you all for joining us. So first of all, Kamal, congratulations on your first movie, which I enjoyed so much and it moved me on so many different levels. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to start by asking you a little bit about yourself, your personal trajectory and how you got into filmmaking and also how you chose to make movies about the complexity and diversity of Moroccan culture and the important place of Jewish culture are as part of Moroccanness. Okay, thank you, Angi. Uh, it's a big honor for me to have uh, my movie and competition in Miami Jewish Film Festival. Uh, it's great. Um, alors, uh, my name is Kamal Ashkar. I was born in Morocco. Uh, I left Morocco, I have six months, and I grew up in France. But uh, because my father has immigrated in France since 68, I was born in 77. So uh, I left Morocco, I have six months. I was born in the beautiful house, uh, like a Casbah, you know? And, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, but every summer, uh, we were in Morocco in holiday, for the holiday to visit my family, to visit my grandmother, to visit my cousin, to visit my hometown, uh, obviously. And um, I grew up in a lot of port in France because my father, uh, worked in a central nuclear, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, every year we have, uh, we, we change uh, the place, we moved uh, the place, you know, and I think my tenderness about uh, people uh, lifting uh, one place to another place, uh, because I, I lived also this, uh, this moment when I was, uh, mm -hmm. when I was a child, you know, mm -hmm. and Alors, why I was uh, so interested by this beautiful and uh, uh, very complex topic? I think, uh, you know, all the artists, when we're making the movie, it's about your, uh, myself also, you know, to, because I have a lot of questions about my identity. Uh, when I was, you know, um, when I was young, uh, when I was in holiday in Morocco uh, for for the Moroccan people, uh, I am French for them, you know, and when I was mm. in French, I am Moroccan. But I think my uh, strange, strangeness, strangeness, mon étrange étrangeté. In the French, strange strangeness, yes. Yeah, exactly. My strange strangeness uh, gave me uh, this, um, this opportunity to talk about this uh, topic. Alors, my first connection with the Jewish culture, it was in school about sh about Shoah, the destruction of uh, Jews in Europe by uh, the Nazism, you know? And of course, I feel empathy with these uh, horrible uh, things. And uh, because for me, uh, and, um, in Morocco, we were only Muslim, you know? I don't know if hmm. you saw my first movie, Tinerir Jerusalem. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, it was about the past, you know, to talk about this, uh, to find these people, uh, in Israel after 50 years uh, of exile, you know, of uh, departure. It was a big, uh, it was a big challenge, you know. And uh, uh, so my first connection, it was in this moment. And uh, after in philosophy, I learned about uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, Walter Benjamin, uh, Karl Marx. And you know, the, the family of Sigmund Freud, 
were very traditional and religious and uh, uh, I think his father was a rabbi, uh, rabbin, you know, and mm -hmm. in the same time he created something universal, the psychanalyst. And I, I thought, I think, uh, me too. I wanted to uh, to to accept my uh, my singularity, and uh, and in the same time to be universal with the other, you know. And when I was uh, twenty years. It was my first, uh, I remember it was my grandfather. Uh, he started to told me to, to talk to me about Jews from Tinrir. And I was totally surprised, you know, because I never heard about Jews in Morocco. And my strange strangeness, it was like my mirror, you know, I, I, I wanted to find myself through this Jewish absence. Huh. Very nice. Um, actually, about the uh, the mirror, I I find that the movie is like a dance of mirrors, that both sides reflect each other, uh, that both sides see each other's origins, each each other each other's homelands in each other's eyes, <laughs> as the title says. Um, that there is this dynamic of something that is lost and something that is found, a question that is answered, uh, as if both parts needed each other yeah. to recognize themselves. Do you think that this is also political? And if so, what does that mean? Of course, it's very political, you know, and uh, if you talk about uh, in your eyes, I see my country, um, when I met Neta Al Kayam for the first time on the Amit Hai Cohen, uh, Neta Al Kayam, she's a singer, great singer, uh, multi talented artist, also, and uh, Amit also, too. And uh, when I met her for the first time and to, to, to see her to sing, uh, it was Yaumi, my first, uh, my first clip of uh, when I saw Neta. Yaumi of Lynn Monti, it's a very, very beautiful song about mother. Uh, she was a Lily, Lynn Monty, she was a, an Algerian Jew, you know. And uh, of course, to sing in Arabic, uh, specifically in this context, you know, in Israel, it's very politic. And Neta uh, told, told that in the movie, you know. And, uh, and I wanted to come to, for me, uh, Neta and Amit and me, we are po body political, you know, the core politic, uh, because uh, we have a lot of identities. Uh, sh sh they, 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 were, uh, they are uh, uh, Israeli, they are American, they are Jews, I am Moroccan, I am French, I am Berber, I am uh, secular, but uh, with the Muslim parents, you know, and uh, all, you know, specifically in this context now, with the with the racism, the, the the demagogy and the populism in this world, not only in uh, also in Palestine, in Israel, in America, in my country too, in Morocco, uh, just to 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 show uh, this incredible uh, this incredible couple singing in Moroccan Arabic. For them, it, it was like they want to reappropriate, you know, themselves. And, uh, and of course, we lost a lot. We lost a lot with this departure of Jewish because I believe, I believe in the diversity. I believe in the plural identities, you know, and Neta and Amit too. And, uh, and I think in this world, yeah, we, we, we need to, to, we wanted to show, I wanted to show how Neta and Amit, uh, they wanted to reconnect with the roots through the music, you know, through the um, Arabic language also, Darija specifically, and they learned Arabic Palestinian and also for the American audience, you know, when they, they will see that. For them, they, we can change the mentality about other. And I believe in the power of the cinema in that, you know. Hmm. Hmm. You understood it's okay. <laughs> And uh, by the way, um, so how did it happen that 
you decided to embark on a journey with Neta El Kayam and Amit Haikoen through the places uh, where their families came from. This encounter be, between them as descendants of Moroccan Jews and the people who knew their families and the places where their families came from is also a re-encounter re through music between Moroccans in general, uh, Jews and Muslims. So what were the different stages of, of shooting and production? Because well, we have like two, two lines here, like their trip to these places, their re personal reconnection and their reconnection with the uh, Moroccanness, let's say, which is a reconnection between everybody. So what, was, what were the different stages of shooting and, and, pro and production? Ah, uh, we are shooting uh, all these uh, sequences about music, which places? The different, uh, the, like the process, how, first, how did you, how did you decide to um, go on a journey with Netal Kayam and Amit Ha'ai going through these places of uh, their past? Of course, I understood. And uh, first of all, the music is not, it's, it's, it's a main character of the movie. Exactly. You know? And uh, it's a trade of the movie, you know. So in French, we told on the we say c'est un fil conducteur. It is a trade of the movie. It's not an illustration about something, you know. Also, if you read the translation, uh, all these uh, songs uh, talk about love, about uh, mm -hmm. about other, and it's uh, like a metaphor also about. Uh, uh, the relationship between Jews and Muslim, you know, about the separation, about uh, a lot of things, you know, and um, uh, which, you know, the documentary, it's always uh, a mix between the, uh, to, to put, uh, to, uh, to direct uh, your characters, you know, as Neta and Amit, you know, because I observed them during seven years uh, at the beginning, uh, we, it, it was in 2012, uh, we, we, we start to begin friend uh, before to, 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 have my, to have this desire to make a movie about her. And specifically when I, when, when I saw, uh, when I knew uh, that Neta, the father of Neta was born in Tinrir, it was for me something, wow, I did my first movie, Tinrir, Jerusalem, about the past. Now I wanted to make something about the present and the future. There is not fatality. Uh, okay, the big history has separated uh, our parents and our grandparents in 15 and 16, you know? And, but now, uh, us, the new generation, we, can, we, have, uh, we have this intimate territory through the music. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, I decided to, we decided to edit and to, to construct the movie uh, with this idea of perhaps for Neta and Amit, it's not perhaps, you know, it's a, for them it's a, uh, they created, uh, they created uh, their intimate space uh, through these songs, through this heritage and music. And I think it's very important that the, because the music, we can hear the music without border, you can be Jews and Muslim, and we share it, this music together in Morocco. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was important to, to, to see that and to meet, it was very easy for them to meet other artists in Morocco, like Abir El Aben and in Tangier, and uh, they make um, a beautiful concert in uh, Esawira, uh, and uh, also in Gibraltar. And uh, we mixed, you know, this moment of, because the, the, the job of Neta and Amit, they are an artist, but in the same time, they're looking for the roots, you know. And uh, when I told you, I observed them during many years. And uh, Neta, she told me always, ah, I, I, make, I want to make my Moroccan passport, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. We, uh, and with this idea, with this uh, first idea, I decided to, to, to create the sequences in the municipality of Tinrir to, for, for her to find the paper of her father, the certificate of birth, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the music, uh, it's uh, very politic, I think, and uh, they can bring people together because on this movie, it's a, a name about plural identities and also uh, a reflection 
uh, about how it is possible to be in between uh, territories, in between culture, in between a lot of things. It is particularly moving, actually, uh, the moment when Neta and uh, Amit sit with a group of musicians, and one of them, uh, one of them explains to them that Jewish Iknawa music was only slightly different, but pure Iknawa, uh, with some changes uh, in the references to the prophet, for example, and he starts singing. That and the song includes uh, references to the Torah, to the Hilula of uh, Tzadik Rabbi Chaim uh, Pinto. This moment is is like a revelation for uh, Neta and Amit, as if they found like a lost link. And the movie is full of moments like this, how in which music is this uh, moment of um, of a truth that is revealed. Of course. So I wanted to ask you, who? Who would, who would you like to touch, to, to move with this movie? And how would you like the Jewish audience in general or people in general, not only the Jewish audience, to receive this movie? Uh, first of all, when we decide to make a movie about this specific uh, topic, uh, we know the, uh, the, um, a lot of things about uh, uh, the politics and you know my first movie Chinarir Jerusalem has generated a big big discussion in Morocco about plural identity and uh, Islamists attack me they accuse me uh, to be a uh, 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 this movie it's a Zionist movie etc etc you know if it's, it's bullshit of course you know uh, you know I'm coming a very popular family and um, I, I am the first uh, uh, in my family to have my baccalaureate, to, be an, to go to the university, to have, but first of all, I wanted to touch everybody, uh, not only Muslim and Jewish, but all the people, rich, poor, and uh, Muslim, Jewish, atheist, and uh, because I think the, the, the music, it's a, it's a language, it's an universal language for all people. And we can bring people together through that, you know. And you 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 describe this all these sequences. It's it's just for to to tell again. Uh, I didn't we didn't use the music as an illustration. It's a, it's a part of the story. It's a part of uh, uh, to to tell also this big story between Jews and Muslim. Uh, about about this plurality, about this uh, identity, about talking about this uh, separation, about this exile, uh, about this memory. And the, it's very, very universal. Uh, all people can be um, in, in, in empathy with Neta and Amit and the, with all the characters, you know, and also with my, uh, my, uh, my demarche, you know, to, to make this, uh, this type of movie. And for me, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. And with regards to um, this uh, polemic that you mentioned, I mean, there, there are a lot of people out there who are completely unaware of the long history of uh, Jews in the Maghreb, as well as throughout the Middle East. Um, this history, which is so alive uh, among those who were there and left and their children and grandchildren is very uncomfortable for a lot of people, not only for Moroccans, as I'm very sure you know very well. Okay. So you yourself encountered, as you said, boycotting like ideological criticism after your first movie, uh, Tingre Jerusalem. Uh, it's, it's, and it's not easy to confront criticism that delegitimizes one's work and one's in intentions. And yet you did it again, doubled down, and <laughs> pulled off an amazingly beautiful de depiction of the Jew deep Jewish roots in the Maghreb and their presence in Israel. So what is it uh, about this story that is so important for you to, as I said, as I said double down and do it again, and this time, Tell a story about, as you said, the present and the future, and not only about the past. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, Tinere Jerusalem has generated a big discussion, but uh, a lot of criticism also from some part 
of the society, you know, Islamist and Parana, Panarabist. But uh, in the same time, I received a lot of uh, very good message uh, about this, uh, about my first movie and also about this uh, sec third movie because I did another movie between uh, Tinerir Jerusalem and uh, In Your Eyes, I See My Country, a totally different topic about love in Morocco through women, uh, Amazigh woman, Berber woman, you know. And, um, you know, for me, it was like, it's a very personal movie, subjective movie. And uh, I'm trying to, to find myself uh, until now, you know. And I found it sometimes, you know, and uh, I know I, am, I, I feel French and I feel Moroccan, but uh, uh, always with this distance, you know. And I think through this um, topic, this Jewish absence, it touched me a lot because uh, uh, I saw when I was a child, when my grandmother and my, mo my mother have to, to, to say bye-bye, uh, after the holiday or in the summer, uh, they cried and the, et cetera, et cetera. And I was very touched by that. And in my mind, always I tell myself how it is possible to, to live your world, your smell of childhood, your house. Um, it's very, it's very, it's, it's, this feeling is very universal. It's not only for Jews and Muslims, you know, and uh, and perhaps uh, I'm looking at my I'm trying to to find my place also uh, to find my house in this life in this world, and uh, I think this uh, uh, through this Jewish absence and this dialectic between presence and absence, you know, and uh, um, I'm trying to to find uh, myself. And uh, mm. I, I have big empathy with this, uh, with this departure because the, the big difference between me and uh, on the Neta and Amit, uh, me, I have a house uh, in Morocco. I can return to, they can return also, but only with the memories and the, you know, and uh, me, I have, I have a, an enracinement, a place, uh, but I grew up in France also, and it, it's also complicated for me to to know when I was teenager and uh, uh, what is my identity, you know, and uh, and uh, perhaps it's always to 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 try to conciliate uh, your um, your own identity with the other identity and uh, to be loyal with your tribute. And in the same time to be free. And uh, I think Neta and Amit, it's my mirror also about my question, about question of life, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this um, reminded me of uh, something that I, I, I read in a, in a um, novel by a Jewish Moroccan writer uh, called uh, Moïse Benarosh who said that uh, Morocco without Jews is a Morocco in exile. And, and I, it, it kept coming to my, to, to my head when, uh, when I read the movie, when I saw the movie and when I was uh, listening to you. And uh, this is going to be, I have two more questions only. Um, do you, you've, mentioned this, but I would like you to expand on this thing. Uh, do you th see this uh, younger generation of Moroccans, both Jewish and Muslims, um, as those who might repair this exile of memories, this, uh, this erased uh, memory that is so heavy uh, on, on this generation and uh, that might actually be the, gener the generation that have something to do about the present and the future. Yeah, of course, I think this new generation of uh, also Neta and Amit and me, uh, we want to repair the wounds 
of exile, you know, uh, wounds, yeah, les blessures de l'exil. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they are tikkun shelanu, you know. Yeah, you, that's our repair, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know this, uh, this word in Hebrew, tikkun, reparation. And uh, yeah, when I saw all the reaction, uh, very positive uh, in uh, Israel and uh, uh, also in Morocco when uh, the movie was shown the, in Doka Aviv, for example, uh, in Tel Aviv, but also in uh, he, he did his, uh, his uh, world premiere in uh, Marrakesh International Film Festival in Marrakesh, and uh, and yeah, on, and recently was shown in the after the normalization uh, between Israel and Morocco uh, last December. Uh, the channel, uh, the big channel in Morocco, they wanted to, they wanted to, to screen uh, in your eyes. They screen, they screened yet Chinarir uh, Jerusalem, you know, because they are co-producer in this time. But now they, they just buy it, you know, and uh, and they screen, and the three million Moroccans saw the movie, and they received a lot of uh, message from the the young people. Uh, they are proud with that, you know. Uh, not only, not only in Israel, and the, because in Israel, there, you know, the the contact, the racism in the fifteen between Ashkenazim and the Sfaradim, you know. And the, now the new generation, Moroccans and the Iraqi and the Yemenis, the the there is a revival about this culture. Yeah, we exist. We want to be recognized uh, by our state you know and also in Morocco recently um, I think I started with in Jerusalem uh, it was the big premiere you know to see American uh, Muslim director to make uh, uh, this movie you know in this time in 2012 it was a little bit taboo and etc uh, etc et now uh, I didn't receive the pol some polemic about uh, that and I received a lot of message and the people here in Morocco, they are very proud because we, we knew, uh, we know we, we lost a lot. Uh, us and uh, and them, you know? And, uh, and I think my modest movie, it's uh, like to, to give this opportunity to, to, to reveal something new between us, you know? between this new generation and uh, because we have a long story in common. We share the same songs, the same language, the same memory. And uh, the grandmother of Neta and my grandmother, they are the same, you know, in clothes, in a lot of things, in the face. And, the, and uh, just, yeah, just to, to, to show that it's very political. Hmm. Hmm. My last question is, um... It's again about uh, music, which, as you said, is the main theme and character of the movie and uh, the most moving of all characters. And uh, as a viewer, I felt that the musicians have been chosen with such care as if, if they all shared an understanding that there is a long past that connects them all. Um, and if, as if they were like this humble guardians of this uh, connection. So I wanted you to explain to us, how did you choose the musicians that would participate and collaborate in this uh, project? And what was that process like? But it was, uh, in, it was two things, you know, and uh, some people like Abir El Abed, she's a very great singer from Tangier. Uh, and, Neta and Amit, enfin, they, they, they make yet already a concert together in Esawira, you know, they met, we, they met uh, in 2014, I think, I don't remember the first festival of Neta, uh, when she was invited uh, to, to, to make a concert on the stage there for the first time, you know, and uh, they are friends, and when I working, uh, about my movie, I decided to, yeah, I have to make something with, uh, with, Abir, with Abir El Abed and uh, with the other artists, it was uh, by, by chance, you know, little bit, make, make tube. And uh, I know, 
when I when I was in a repérage, for example, in Tangier, uh, also, and uh, I met this incredible band of uh, uh, men, uh, Les Fils du Détroit, uh, son of Detroit, you know, and making Andalus music. And yeah, I started to, to listen and uh, I, I met the manager of this group and I told them, yeah, I want to, to make a connection between Neta and uh, Amit and with your group. And it was like, um, uh, during the repariage and, uh, and, uh, and the, in the same time, it was also by chance, you know, because mm. the it's also this, uh, this uh, beautiful uh, things of uh, reality, you know, she, she can happen like this, you know, and you don't, you don't have in your mind, ah, I will do these sequences. No, it was like, it's, it's magical, you know. Hmm. Yeah, magical. one thing led to the other. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hmm. Hmm. Well, thank you very, very, very much, Kamal. Uh, thank you um, for, for this interview, really. It was really great. Thank so you. thank you to Kamal Ashkar, director of In Your Eyes, I See My Country, for joining us. Once again, thank you to all of our members, sponsors, community partners, volunteers, all of you film lovers, and especially our presenting sponsors, the Center for the Advancement of Jewish Education, SAGE, and the Greater Miami Jewish, Film, uh, Jewish Federation for their continued support throughout all these years. And thank you, our audience, for participating in the 24th Annual Miami Jewish Film Festival.